Now let's discuss valid identifiers. And in the previous video, we've used variable names or identifiers that have only been a single character, but Python allows much more general identifier names. And we just have to follow some simple rules. And first of all, the identifier can consist of any number of letters, digits, and underscore characters, but it has to start with a underscore or letter. We can't start with a digit. Identifiers are case sensitive. So if we change the case, we have changed what the identifier is, and we cannot use one of the 33 keywords that exist in Python 3. And we'll talk about what those key words are in a minute. Now let's consider some examples of valid identifiers. So we can have something that starts with an underscore, maybe call it x5, underscore x5, and say that's equal to 12. And so if we have an expression that has 3 plus underscore x5, that's perfectly legitimate, and we get 15. We could have Big Bang Theory is equal to, let's say, 13, and that would be different from Big Bang Theory written in all lowercase. Let's make that one 42. So if we have Big Bang Theory in lowercase, we see that's 42. If we have it capitalized with Big Bang Theory, that's 13. We could also put underscores in the variable name. So Big Bang Theory, and that's equal to, let's say, 100. All of these are unique variable names. We could have 1 and underscore 2, underscore 3, and maybe set that to 123. So those are all valid variable names. Now let's consider some invalid identifiers. And let's go with Big Bang Theory. So we might like to write that. It looks like we're using hyphens there. But this is not an underscore that's in between those words. It is, to Python, a minus sign. And we can't have an expression where we're subtracting things on the left-hand side of the assignment operator. So that doesn't work. Uh, how about this? If we say 2 underscore 3 underscore 4, well, if we try that, this won't work because we've started that identifier with a digit. So, no, nope, that doesn't work. And how about if we go with big bucks, but for S we put a dollar sign instead, and maybe we'll go for a million dollars. But this won't work because we can't use punctuation marks. We could only use digits, letters, and the underscore character. So again, we get a syntax error. I previously said that valid identifiers cannot be one of the 33 keywords that exist in Python 3. So what are those keywords, or sometimes they're called reserved words? Well, we can get Python to tell us what they are. And don't worry about the syntax of these commands. I'll just show them to you. So we could say import keyword. That's one statement or command we issue. And then we can say print keyword dot kw list and hit return. And we see oh, a whole bunch of these words. They're kind of wrapped around and this thing that's called a list of strings. And we notice in there things like false, none, true, and so on. One of them is DEF. Well, let's try and use that as a variable and see what happens. And it turns out if we try to use a keyword as a variable, 
the error message we get is not very helpful, but let's start out with some legitimate things. Let's say ABC is equal to 1, and maybe BCD is equal to 2, and CDE is equal to 3, and then DEF, it looks like that should be the next thing we can write to. And no, DEF is a key word. We cannot use it as a variable. And the error message isn't very helpful. It just says syntax error, invalid syntax. And idle highlights the assignment operator. But that didn't really tell us that the problem here is that DEF is a key word. But idle was giving us a hint in that it colorizes keywords differently from regular variables. So that ABC, the BCD, the CDE, those were just shown in black. DEF as a keyword shows up as kind of that orange text. And that's warning us that this is a keyword hands off. You can't mess with this. Now look at that list of keywords for a second and notice that one of the functions we've used quite a bit, the print function, isn't in there. So does that mean we can assign a value to a variable named print? And if we do, what happens? So let's check that out. Let's say print is equal to, how about 1,234? And I hit return and we didn't get an error message. How about if I put print on the line by itself, hit return? Uh, that's strange, I see 1,234 now. So what about if I try to print hello? And when I hit return now, uh, that didn't work. And look at that error message. It says the type error, that int object is not callable. So what happened when we used that assignment statement? We assigned an integer value to the name print, and we essentially covered up the built-in function print. So that's gone. We don't have access to it anymore. But there's actually a way to recover it. One of the keywords is del, D-E-L, and that will delete any definitions we've put in there. So we could say D-E-L print, and that will remove the assignment we made to print. So now let's try this. Let's try again to print hello. Oh, and now it works. Okay, so keep in mind that sometimes you can, by mistake, mask some function that you were trying to use or some other variable by assigning a value to that thing that you really wanted to access later on. So just keep that in mind as a potential source of errors.